Oh, hey there. I'm gonna transform this ax from old and rusty into new and mm, not crusty. Now the first thing I gotta do is take off the axe handle. And there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I kinda use whatever I have to, to see how this thing comes out. Here I'm just using a rebar and a sledgehammer and a pole saw to try and get this thing out. There we go, finally. And now that the handle is off, I can start by sandblasting this. Now I don't have one of those professional sandblasting boxes. I literally just do it out in the open. So protection is absolute key for me and I couldn't recommend this mask enough. This mask is in the description if you are interested. Now I apologize for the camera quality here. There is no protection between this sand and my camera, so it is just going everywhere. And here it is after being sandblasted. It actually looks really good and you can see the Collins logo really well now. I'm now going to take my angle grinder with discs from 100 to 220 grit and I'm going to get the surface nice and clean. Now I'm done with the angle grinder and I'm going to use my orbital sander with grits from 220 to 1500 to really polish and sand this thing smooth. Now that this is nice and polished, it's time to put this aside and start working on this handle. Now I'm going to be using walnut for my handle and the first thing I need to do is hand plane aside to make it perfectly flat. That way when I run it through the table saw, it is a perfectly straight and parallel cut. I then put it through the thickness planer, make sure both sides are perfectly flat, and then I'm ready for the table saw. This is actually my very first time using this brand new Harvey table saw. I am so pumped to use this for the first time. It's such a step up from my old job site saw. I'm going to put a link in the description of the exact table saw I got in case you're interested. Now that the walnut is ripped to the right width I want, it's time to glue them up and use as many clamps as humanly possible. Now one of the huge selling points for me in this Harvey saw was this compass miter gauge. This thing actually comes with the saw and basically it substitutes as a table sled, but it's better because it has locking angles where you could do fine adjustments and also has a stop block built into it with again adjustments that could be made very very precisely and accurately for repeatable cuts. And just like the table saw, this is my very first cut with this compass miter gauge. Now if you're confused of what I'm doing here, so am I. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to whip together a little design that might look cool for an axe handle. So I decided to kind of do a inlay where I'm going to actually hog out material on both sides of this axe handle leaving about a third of the walnut still in the very center. And then I'm gonna put a design on top of those and then cast it in epoxy resin. Um, it might seem confusing right now, but you will see shortly what I mean. Now for this portion where I'm hogging out material, I think it's best to have a dedicated blade. I think it's like a, a father blade or a, a dad blade daddy -o blade or something like that. I don't have one of those. I just use the blade that came with the saw and then I basically just make a ton of cuts to hog out material. 
Now you can start to get a better idea of what I'm going for. I have these parallel cuts on both sides of this walnut board and I'm going to inlay a design on the bottom of these and then fill it with epoxy resin. Man, that was a lot of work and I'm a little hungry and I'm just not myself when I'm hungry so it's time for a little snack. One for one. Can he go two for two? Oh, uh, uh, that's just embarrassing. Get out of here. All right, now that I'm halfway full, it's time to get back to work. I'm using my Cricut cutter here with some maple veneer, some really thin veneer that this thing can actually cut through. I'm gonna cut out this little design and then basically transfer this design to my ax handle by using this little tape trick here. And would you look at that, we got a perfect fit. And now it's time for the epoxy. I'm gonna be doing multiple pours. So for the first pour, I'm doing a really thin layer, just kind of sealing in the wood and making sure that bubbles don't come up underneath this inlay. Once the first side is cured, it's time to do the back side. And then once that's cured, it's time to do the final pour on the opposite side. Now I really have a love-hate relationship with epoxy. I am super impatient, so what I did here was I poured one side, and before letting it cure fully, I flipped it over and tried to pour the other side that same day. Well, I show up in the morning to this mess of drips coming down that side that was facing down. Uh, basically, it was not cured all the way, obviously. Um, but the easy thing here is it's an easy fix. I just have to do yet again another pour on this top side to fill in all these little gaps from the drips. And once that is fully cured, and I mean fully cured, then I take it over to the bandsaw and I kind of rough out the ax shape. It's always good to save the ax handles because they work as perfect templates for your new handle. Before moving on to the final shaping, I actually throw this through my thickness planer to get it the desired thickness that I want. I then sand down the sides because I can't throw this through the thickness planer, trying to make sure that both sides are perfectly parallel to one another. Then it's always good to test out your handle a little bit before finishing, and good axe handle, terrible swing. I decided I wanted sharper lines on the handle of this thing, so I just used this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, a, a line angle gauge thingamabobber, eh, whatever it is. I used that and then I just used a pole saw to, to cut those off. And keeping up with those sharp lines, I'm going to be using a 45 degree chamfer bit and I'm going to basically route all the sides of this axe handle. Now for the moment you've been waiting for, you saw this thumbnail, you saw that this axe was going from old to gold, but I have a confession. I lied to you guys. I'm very sorry, but would you have clicked on a thumbnail that said from old to brass? It just doesn't have the same ring to it. What I'm actually doing here is brass plating this using heat and a wire brass brush. It's as simple as that. You heat the metal, you brush it on, and it will turn brass. It's actually really cool. This is my first time doing it, and I think I'm gonna do this again. And now it's time for the etching process. So I'm just gonna put a vinyl sticker on here. I'm gonna use this thingamabobber to get even borders all around it, and then take it off. And then use my Cricut cutter to cut out the same design as the ax handle. I'm gonna plop that on there, and then we are ready for etching. 
Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I metal etch using electricity and salt and water. Well, I actually did that with this thing and it did not work. What happened was the brass plating actually prevented it from being etched. So here is my backup option. I got this nasty sulfuric acid, which I read online works. And I'm just gonna submerge the ax head in this, hoping that it eats away the brass and metal. Will it work? I have no idea. I'm just gonna leave it in there and check in an hour or two. So here's about two hours later. I can already see that the vinyl is kind of getting deteriorated in some parts. And as I'm pulling it up, I'm quickly realizing that it worked in some areas and other areas it didn't. And this actually looks kind of cool. I debated a very long time just keeping it like this because it looks kind of cool. But ultimately I decided I want this thing looking completely gold, uh, brass, completely brass, because I think that would look really cool. And here you can kind of see how good this brass plating works. You can see the, the transition between both these sides here. It's pretty cool. Once it's completely brass plated, I just put on some oil for rust prevention. And then we are ready to fit this thing on the axe handle. Now I don't really know the proper way of fitting an axe head on this handle, but what I do and what I've been doing previously is I just take a chisel and I cut out the lines on both sides. I kind of chisel that down and then I use a heavy duty rasp and files to really clear and bore away a lot of material. like a glove. Now it's time for finish sanding work. I'm gonna sand this thing down to a thousand grit, making sure that the epoxy is crystal clear and nice and polished. Now it's time for my favorite part and that is putting on the finish because it means I am almost done with this thing. I'm gonna do two coats of this oil-based finish and we are almost ready for the big reveal. And here it is, the finished axe. If you like this video, be sure to check out my other videos. Do me a favor and hit that subscription button. And until next time, this is Blake from BM Sculptures.